It's my great pleasure to welcome you to a new edition of SHAP Chat. We're really thrilled to be joined at LCU today by Rory Vaden. Welcome to LCU. Hey, thank you. I'm, I'm so excited to be here. So great to have you. Co-founder of, South, of uh, Southwestern Consulting and the author of Take the Stairs and Procrastinate on Purpose. Really great to have you. Look forward to this afternoon's uh, session. Thanks for being here. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Well, the, with our SHAP Chat, we always ask the same four questions to our guest LCU, so we're going to do that. And I'm pre-prepared for the first, but I haven't thought about the other three. So. That, that will make it just uh, the suspense will build, and there's no telling what will happen by the end of the conversation. It's great. So. Good. First question is, what's your favorite word? And, and why? So this is such a great question and I didn't actually have to prepare for this because I would have known the answer anyways, but my favorite word is multiplier. And I think when I think of God's word, right, you hear so much about all the different stories and the gospels and Jesus, and of course it's all beautiful, but one of the things I realized a few years ago, and obviously part of what I talk about is how to multiply your time, but after we did all the research and everything for that book, procrastinating on purpose at the very end of the book just randomly one day I'm just kind of flipping through the Bible in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 God delivers the very first command to all of humanity and it's amazing because it hit me because it was like is the first command you know you know have no other gods before me is it love thy neighbor as thyself no those are commandments but the first recorded command is be fruitful and multiply. And I think that is just what my prayer is, that God would take you know, my life and he would do something with it, that he would multiply it. And that for everybody, if we are born in his image and created in his image, then somewhere inside of us is some small fragment of that power to be able to create and influence and multiply. And I think that's what we wanna do is multiply his kingdom, multiply his good works, and in my case, even though I work in a secular environment, I, I hope to help people multiply. I love that because because it has such great application in our work in Christian education and for churches and for our work as followers of Jesus, but also a great application in the business world. So what a great what a great word. Thank you. Did not did not expect that. I love that multiplier. We're going to add it to our list of favorite words. Uh, this is a time there's a lot of bad news. Uh, you know, we look around, we read the headlines, and there are lots of reasons to despair sure. and to be concerned about our future. I wonder when you uh, scan the landscape, when you think about what's happening, uh, what gives you hope for the future? Mm. Well, one thing I will say is sort of interesting is I don't spend a lot of time following the news. And one of the reasons why is because I, I guess I just realized that you can go back to 1960 or 50 or 70 and you can look at the news media and you can see all sorts of bad news That's right and I think what I realized about the news is that the news isn't necessarily in the business of relaying accurate information what the news is the news is in the business of attention mm -hmm. and just like any other media there they are that currency is attention and so what gets attention often is hyperbole and exaggeration and you know, horror stories and fear. So it's, that's probably not necessarily the question you ask. I don't think so much about you know, what gives me hope for the future. It's more of I don't think things are as bad as we all think. I think that we live in the most amazing time in human history. I mean, on any given day, most of us are not fearing for our life. We have our basic needs taken care of. When I think of where we are in, in the spiritual story, the story of Jesus, we live in the best part of the story, well, the second best part, that it's already done. We are the redeemed, we are the saved. Right. We're not the ones having to walk around for 40 days and 40 nights and <laughs> be enslaved for 400 years. Like, we're the saved ones, we're the cherished ones. And I just think, that the future is bright because the world is bright. We're advancing, people are smart. And I think perhaps there is danger in losing hope just from spending a little bit too much time and a little bit too much attention in the news. So that's just my personal. Well, it's a great word to all of us that it's so important what we fill ourselves up with. What, what are we paying attention to? What, what, are we, what are we drinking in? Social media for so many can become an obsession. It's just a constant uh, 
parade of, uh, of bad stuff or anger or hostility. And boy, if we fill ourselves up with that stuff, guess what? That's what we produce. Yeah, and if you fill yourself up with God's Word, what you see is it's still as relevant today as it ever has been. So that, there's your hope, right? Your hope is these principles apply, it's all still true, it's all still immediately relevant, and, and you should fill yourself up as much as possible with that. And I would raise my hand and say, I, I'm the first person that needs to do a better job of that. Uh, preach on, preach on, brother. <laughs> well, the third question for our Shap Chat is, uh, who is someone that's been an inspiration for you in, in your life, in your work? Who, who do you look to as that's someone who has helped me, set me on my path or continues to aspire to be more like this person? Yeah, well, there's there's a lot of people that inspire me. I think I draw inspiration from a lot of places. The, you know, the thing that comes to mind is my mother was a single mom and she was pregnant when she was, you know, in high school, had my brother, was married a few years, got divorced, then I met my biological father had me when she was 22 and he was out of the picture six months later they were divorced and so she's 22 years old two kids wow. single mom no college education and now having my own son having a one-year-old yes. son I just I don't know how she did it I literally can't wrap my mind around having two of us and not having anywhere near the kind of resources that that we have and and just how she did it, I think, is amazing. And I know that how she did it was by community. Mm. And it's, it was fellowship and it was the people around her. And, and even though I didn't have a dad for the first several years of my life, there were men and women all around us that were lifting, lifting me up. And I don't know, I guess that's, that's probably something that has changed for me in the last year. A year ago, before I had a son, I probably would have given you a different answer. I would have probably said one of my mentors and there's dozens of them. Right. But Nobody's asked me that question in the last year, and I think having a son has really made me go, gosh, like, Mom, how did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, a shout out to all of our single moms out there. It's, yeah. it's absolutely incredible, the, the dedication, the perseverance, the heroism of, of making that work. Yeah. It's really, and you, de you can't fully appreciate it until you're a parent and just understand how hard it is. Amen. Yeah, yeah Amen. We, we, it takes a village for sure. <laughs> the last question is, uh, we've got, this is a university, we've got all these great, bright, ambitious students who want to make a difference in the world, they want to go out and do something significant uh, as, uh, as part of God's kingdom and as in their chosen career paths. Uh, and I wonder for them, for that audience specifically, what's the, what's the most important piece of advice that you would give them as they look ahead to their futures? I'm going to deliver this in two parts. Okay. So the first thing is, for those of you that are am ambitious, which is what I was, I was young and I was ambitious and I think that's healthy, I think it's wonderful, I think that's a God-given fire that He gives to you because he, he wants you to go conquer the world. I think my advice there would be trust that you always get paid for how hard you work. Sometimes now, oftentimes later, but always eventually. And so if you just put your faith and trust in the process and the journey and just working hard and not so much your results and your pay and your short term, like if you just do the work, somehow sooner or later it catches up with you. And at some point the scale tips to where you're getting more rewards than you deserve. But when you start, you have to be doing more work than what you're rewarded for. And so from a, from a personal perspective, I would say that. Then chapter two, or at least the chapter that's been in my life, is for a young, ambitious mover and shaker, a leader, I think I've spent, unfortunately, I've spent a large part of the first part of my career really focused on achievement and things personally. And I think, obviously, a big part of my message with the Take the Stairs book is self-discipline. We're going to talk about that today. And what I realize now is, is that it's really about service more than it is about success. And if service is beneath you, then leadership is beyond you. Mm. And service is the highest form of self-discipline. And so the sooner you can get past your own need for achievement, recognition, et cetera, the sooner you can sort of mature through that and get completely focused on serving people, I think that's gonna accelerate your impact. It's gonna accelerate God's impact. And 
I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit it's taken me longer to get to that point than I, I sort of wish it would have. Mm. Well, that is quite great advice for our students. One of our part of our mission statement, part of our vision statement, is that we want to be a place that fosters service as we prepare our students for lives of purpose and service. That's that's at the core of what LCU wants to be, and helping our students understand their education is uh, not a means to to it's it's not an end in itself, but it's a means to a life of meaning that, that serves others. So. That's a great place to end. We're really glad to have you at LCU today, Rory. Thanks so much for coming our way. We look forward to a great afternoon. Shap Chat, so exciting. Oh, Here we are. It's been great. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you.